Final Fantasies 10 and 10 2. These are two games that I felt were cursed, at least when it came to me years ago. When they were on the PS2, every time I would drive to go buy them, something would go wrong and I would not get there. Something wrong with my car, forgetting that I needed to do something else at the time. No matter what it was, something happened whenever I wanted to go buy them from a GameStop store and I never got them, at least not on the PS2. When they came to handheld years later on the PlayStation Vita, I dived into both and loved both. And now I've gotten the chance to dive into them again on a handheld again. Here is my review of Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster for the Nintendo Switch. The stories in this collection are very different because there are multiple games here. Final Fantasy X centers around a sports player known as Titus, whose world is thrown upside down when his city is attacked by a giant monster called Sin. He washes up in a world he thinks is 1,000 years into the future, and starts traveling around the world with a summoner and her guardians, with the intention of defeating Sin once and for all, the monster that tore him from his home. Meanwhile, Final Fantasy X-2 is a little bit different. It takes place two years after the events of Final Fantasy X, where the summoner Yuna runs away from home to become a sphere hunter, chasing after something very dear to her that she found on a sphere that was given to her. The biggest differences in these stories are the writing and the character personalities. Final Fantasy X, you're doing like a big, epic conquest, save the world mission. Whereas X2 is a lot less serious and much more lighthearted in Yuna's little quest to find spheres. They're both pretty decent stories, but X2 definitely has a flaw in its writing. A lot of characters have really different personalities than they did in X, especially Yuna and Riku. And there's really just a lot of head-scratching and goofy banter where there shouldn't be. I'm not saying it's a terrible story, it's just very different. When it comes to gameplay, Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster is a collection of two turn-based RPGs. Across both of these games, you're going to be trekking through dungeons and fighting monsters in turn-based combat. First of all, this is the HD Remaster, so all of the international content for X and X2 is included here. That includes the Dark Aeons in Final Fantasy X, the Fiend Arena, and over 150 different playable characters in Final Fantasy X-2, plus the playable sequel to X-2, Last Mission, as well as Final Fantasy X Will, which is an audio drama that takes place after X-2 that was created for this HD collection. But there is some missing content here. When this HD remaster released on Steam, it got a lot of boosters and cheats like high speed mode and auto battle mode. These were not added to the Switch and Xbox versions of the game, which is a big bummer especially for the high speed mode, because Final Fantasy X still has unskippable cutscenes and some very long ones leading to boss fights. So if you lose a boss battle, you have to watch through the entire scene again before you can retry the fight. Now in terms of progression, Final Fantasy X and X2 are a little different. X is a standard console RPG where you're constantly moving from area to area, pretty linear-like, fighting through battles and bosses to keep the story going forward. And until you get to the end of the game, X doesn't really offer a lot of side content or extra stuff you can do outside of the Blitzball minigame. X2, on the other hand, gives you access to pretty much every area in the game from the get-go, with a literal mountain of side content that you can do anytime you want. Now outside of this, navigating through areas and doing combat isn't really that different between the two games. You wander through areas and pick up treasure as you go, and you have random encounters where you do turn-based battles against enemies. Both of these games have the active time battle system and pretty much the same combat system even though they look and feel very different. That's because X has a more classic battle system, where every action a character or enemy takes, the other characters have to wait before they start their actions. But in X2, characters start moving and jumping in the moment you put in their command, so you can easily have two characters jumping in and attacking an enemy at the same time. This also allows you to cancel out enemy actions if you attack them while they're casting. It also feels a little different because of the extra features that one game has over the other. Final Fantasy X has an extensive party system where you can swap out party members anytime you want, and each party member is strong against a certain enemy type. Whereas X2 has a job system and only three main party members outside of the Fiend Arena. So if you want exploit weaknesses in X2, you have to use the Dress Sphere system to change your character's job and change up their skills. And the final difference in terms of combat is how new skills are learned and how you advance your stats. Final Fantasy X has a sphere system instead of a leveling system where you use spheres dropped by enemies to move your characters around on a grid and use those same spheres to teach them skills and increase their stats. Whereas in X2 you have a proper leveling system and getting new skills is just a matter of staying in a certain job or dress sphere and attacking enemies. 
No need to worry about where you're going on a grid, just keep using that job in battle and you'll learn skills on your own. All these systems sound great, but there are a few things that I don't like. The party system is cool where you can constantly swap between each party member, but it gets a little frustrating and long when you want to flee from battle. Instead of having your entire party flee at the same time, each individual character has to flee separately. This makes running away from battle in areas where you're clearly outclassed very, very difficult. Now when it comes to content and length, there's a lot of stuff here. Each of these games should take you at least 40 hours to go through, not counting the Will audio drama and not counting Last Mission. You may not get 100 hours out of this game like the description suggests, but assuming you play both games, you'll easily get at least 70 to 80 hours out of it. Now let's dive into presentation and graphically, I don't think there exists a bad version of this game. Everything looks nice and smooth and there are no jagged edges anywhere. There is a little bit more detail in the character models than in the Vita version, but not very much. But that's still a good thing because even the Vita versions looked amazing for a handheld version of Final Fantasy X. In terms of performance, I have no complaints. It never crashed on me, the frames never dropped, everything is optimized incredibly well, unlike the previous ports of Final Fantasy VII and IX. They really did a nice job with this one. Now let's dive into battery life, which is pretty decent. This collection has a battery range of 3 hours and 3 minutes on high settings, up to 5 hours and 3 minutes on low settings. Now, in conclusion, this collection brings a ton of content that is way more optimized than the past few Final Fantasy games Square Enix put on the Switch. Now the downside, we didn't get any of the boosters and cheats from the Steam version of the remaster, and each of these games still has little problems in it. But if you're looking for more Final Fantasy action on the go, this collection is going to give you a whole lot of it. Reviews to Go rates the Final Fantasy X and X2 HD remaster for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at reviews2go.com.